Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist of Seymour. Well, doesn't quite look like First United Methodist of Seymour. You know, here in just, you know, last minute, we decided it was time for us to go to online only. So we have suspended in-person worship for two weeks. Just trying to be safe, loving our neighbor, even though that means it's an inconvenience for us, we felt it was the right thing to do at this time. So we're online for January 23rd and January 30th. And I applaud you for making God a priority today. Um, just want to give you a, a couple of announcements. Hey, you know, I've noticed that um, many of you, especially who do online, probably do not get our midweek newsletter. And we're going to start doing some um, announcements of some changes in the church through that mechanism. So if you would like to start receiving the midweek newsletter, just call our church office, 812-522-1137 and leave a message for Margaret and with your contact information so that she can add you to the midweek newsletter that normally goes out via email. If you need it mailed, we can do that too. So I wanted to make sure you know about that. And then also, I know there's a lot of people who worship online because I see the numbers. And every week we know what numbers are coming in, who's actually worshiping online, who's actually in the building. And I see odd numbers of people I don't know. Names, sometimes I don't even know the names. And if you are worshiping with us, I want to be your pastor. I want to still be able to contact you to be able to, to be with you, just like I would anybody else in our congregation. So if you are worshiping online, you can just go in and do a message to the church right there on Facebook and let us know who you are and your contact information. If you feel more comfortable, call the church. Once again, 812-522-1137 and give us your contact information. And then that way, I can support you and be there for you. Even though you're online, I can still be there for you. So I want to be able to tell you about that today. Also, um, prayer concerns. Jerry Cartmel had to have surgery this week. His uh, pacemaker that they put in recently had a problem, so they had to pull it out. And then after they solved the problem, they'll put it back in. So please keep Jerry and Diane in your prayers. We'll make sure you did that. And then also, um, I wanted to just kind of remind you that if you haven't already done so, your tithes and offerings, since we're not meeting in person, you can mail them in to the church, 201 East 3rd Street, Seymour, Indiana, or you can uh, go into your online banking and have it sent to the church. That way you don't have to think about it, it just automatically does it. Whatever works best for you, we have some other avenues too, if you would like to use those, but those are the two primary ones that most of the people use at this time. So we will do that, and then a little bit later on, we will bless those offerings uh, as we do it in the service. And you'll notice the service is going to be a little different because we don't have the choir. We don't have Judy playing the organ and the piano. We don't have all the other pieces we normally do. We don't have the screens. It'll be a little modified. Next week, we hope to go back to doing it in the church, but it'll be online only, and we would just have a skeleton crew there. So I wanted to let you know what was going on, okay? So at this time, you know, it's time for us to just kind of pause and prepare ourselves to worship God. And I heard someone describe this this week a little differently. They said, you know, this is the moment for you to settle your mind, but leave all those things on your mind right now at the feet of Christ. And for the next hour, lift your eyes and worship to Christ, leaving those. Those items on your mind, at your feet. So I ask you to prepare yourself as we go in to worship. First, we're going to do the gathering prayer. I know you don't have it before you. That's okay. We are going to pray. Please bow your heads to that together with me. God of our restoration. Whenever we come home to you, to you, we realize how far we have strayed and how much we have forgotten of your law and of your love. We have not loved you with our whole hearts or loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, heal us, restore us to our relationship with you. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of the Bible for its psalms and poems, stories, histories, teachings, and prophecies. 
May the Holy Spirit who called out those ancient writings continue to call us out today. That our lives may reflect the first sermon of Jesus, our crucified and risen Christ, who brings good news to the poor and let the oppressed go free. In Jesus' name we humbly pray. Amen. Now for our children's moment today, and kids, go ahead and kind of get close and get ready, okay? I want to show you something, okay? Let me move my stuff out of the way. I got stuff everywhere, don't I? Well, we did a glass of water just recently, didn't we? We got another jar of water, okay? It's a jar of water. You know, in our world, there's a lot of bad things happening. And a friend of mine, two friends of mine, Lori and uh, you know Heather Cress and Lori Grasty, they shared this, and I really thought this was a good way to express one of the things we need to talk about related to our scripture today, especially for the kids. There's a lot of things happening in our world today. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I sit back, if you just step back and watch, you will see people miss out on seeing God in the world because what are they doing? They're complaining. They're grumbling. All the different things that happened. Just in our daily lives, think about how many times either we or we experience someone in our lives in line at a checkout, um, at a drive through whatever it may be, grumbling, complaining, gossiping, not being kind to one another, being out, downright mean to one another. I want you to see what happens with that, okay? So think about every time we hear someone gossip about someone else. How about a time when someone is mean to another person? How about when someone gets excluded? You know what I mean when I say excluded? It means they weren't invited to join to play with everybody else. They weren't invited to the birthday party. They weren't invited to play in that game on the playground. They weren't invited to play on the swings. They're sitting on the bench all alone and they've been excluded. How about someone who's not allowed to eat lunch with someone else in the lunchroom? They want them to sit somewhere else. <laughs> How about when they just use plain, mean words? Or when someone makes fun of someone for what they wear, how they wear their hair, what they dress in, maybe because they believe differently, maybe because they look different. Think of all the times that we see that behavior in our lives. You see when they complain and grumble, make fun, talk about others, and are just flat out mean. This is what happens in our world. It starts clouding it up. It starts makes it hard to see God in our world because all these other things are getting in the way. They make it hard for not only you, but for other people to see God working in our lives. But you know, we are the body of the Christ. All of us are the body of Christ. Not just a few people. All of us are the body of Christ. There's many members in the body of Christ. That means each of us has a role in bringing Christ to the world. And sometimes that means we're pointing out God to people who maybe didn't see God right before them. Since the world is full of bad things, we need to point it out for others. You know, in some good examples, sunrises and sunsets. When you see a sunrise or a sunset, God doesn't have to have that beauty in this world, but God chose every morning and every evening we get to see all these colors and this beauty. Chooses to remind us, I created the world and I still give this to you every day. Or when we pray for someone and that prayer gets answered, that's when we can stop and say, you know, God's working in our lives. 
I can see God working here. And I've got example and example and example of that that you've heard sometimes me say, and many of them I haven't even shared, where I've prayed for something and someone walked into my life that I needed right at that moment. How about when you need help and help shows up? Like your best friend at school isn't there today and you go out to recess and they're not there. And you're all alone. No need to swing the swings together, but there was nobody else on the swings and you just felt all alone. And then suddenly someone shows up and said, would you like to play this game with us? Would you like to be part of the kickball game? Would you want to swing with us? Tell you guys, that's God listening to what you need at that moment. Sometimes God shows up in the little details of our life. And when we take the time to point out that God just showed up, what do you think happens? It starts neutralizing all the bad things that we have seen happen. And by us pointing it out, it helps other people see God working in their lives. Watch this as our, as our service goes on. Watch what happens inside our water that had been all muddied up with the purple. What's going to happen once we've added all the good things that we pointed out God working in our lives? Okay? So just stay tuned and keep an eye on that, okay? Like I mentioned earlier, you know, you can send in your tithes and offerings because each of us are essential. They truly are to the life and well-being of the whole body of Christ. And we come now to share those things. Whether we're mailing them in, or we're sending it via online banking, whatever method we're using. And you can do it the ways I mentioned. And so now, we will bless these. As we know they're going to be coming in. So Lord, Lord, we lift up all these people. We lift up all the ways that they help out others and they share of the abundance you have given. Bless these gifts that we have been given so they may further the reign in your world. And let us now turn to scripture as we pray the prayer of illumination. We have gathered before your word, O oh Lord. We want to hear with understanding. So give us attentive ears by the power of your Holy Spirit at work in the world and at work in this word read and proclaimed make the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts acceptable to you our rock and redeemer amen our scripture begins in Psalm 19 7 through 14. If you want to follow along, Psalm 19, 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much more fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and keeping them there is great reward. But who could detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And then we move to the epistles. We're in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 26. 
So if you're following along, it's 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 26. Let's listen for the word of God. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respective members, respectable members do not need this. But the God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, in our scripture today, Paul is telling the people of Corinth that each has a role to play in the body of Christ. The body does not consist of one member, but of many, is what it said. We all have a role to play in the body of Christ. And you never want to underestimate the value of the gifts that you have been given and how others rely on you to use your gift so they are enabled then also to use their gift. Now, before we continue, I'm going to tell you about this light assembly, okay? I've had a problem lately. A few weeks ago, I noticed my driver's side rear brake light was out of my Jeep. And how do you know your brake light's out? You get to hear that rapid clicking sound, click, 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 click telling you, hey, something's wrong. And there's never a good time for me to mess with that stuff, okay? So I turned on my turn, I checked my turn signal and I knew something was wrong. I went out and just bought two replacement bulbs because usually it's just the bulb went out, right? And in my light, this is a Jeep light assembly, by the way. And so I just took it out, took this off my Jeep, took this out, replaced the bulb, put it back in. That up been fine, right? That'll work then, right? Well, a week later, I turned on my turn signal to hear that rapid clicking sound all over again. I gotta tell you, I just was not in the mood for that at the moment. So I went home and pulled out the tail light assembly. Once again, to do this, you gotta understand this whole thing has to come out every single time, okay? So once again, I got out my screwdriver and I pulled out the whole tail light assembly and the bulb wasn't in the holder. It wasn't here. It was loose in here. It was loose in this part. Well, that's odd. Must not have been put in well. So I took the bulb and I pushed it back in again. Put it back together. Screwed it onto the Jeep. Guess what happened? The next day I heard the sound again. I went home, pulled out the entire light assembly again. Once again, the bulb was missing, but it was in there rattling loose. So I had to look closer where I insert the bulb. 
And you can't see this because you can't get this close. But in here are two little clips that hold this bulb in place. Once you push it in, it holds it in place. But you know what? I can do this. I go get electrical tape. And I wrap it around and I put the bulb in there and I've got electrical, electrical tape around it. Can't put too much in because it's still going to slide into this little space. I've got it solved. Put the light assembly back on. Went off my day. Next day, about in the afternoon, I started hearing the sound again. So I took it apart that night, and sure enough, it was in here, but it was just pulled out enough that it wouldn't recognize that it was connected. Well, I'm stubborn, asked my husband. So I took that tape off, and I crisscrossed it. I did all sorts of things. You won't believe what I did, but I had to be careful because it has to fit into this little spot. And guess what? Worked great for a couple of days. Because it's cold outside and electrical tape isn't exactly made to adhere in these cold weather. I'm frugal. An assembly like this doesn't cost $5. It costs quite a bit more. And I didn't want to spend it. But I finally had to do it because I had to admit this little bitty piece, this itty bitty part that holds in this light bulb was valuable. Cause if it isn't holding in that part, this light doesn't shine when it needs to shine. Which means when I'm driving along, people don't know I'm putting on my brake. When I'm driving along, people won't know if I'm turning because the, light, the turn signal won't go off. It's important that little itty bitty part enabled all these other parts to work. And the only way I could replace that itty bitty part was to buy the entire light assembly. You can't buy that itty bitty part. You know, the reason I share this story today is because one little part held the bulb in place. That itty bitty part made it possible for people to see when I was about ready to stop. That itty bitty, itty bitty part made it possible for some people to see when I was turning right. That itty bitty part was needed because when someone else is following me to a location, they would know I'm about ready to turn. Not to mention, it keeps me from getting pulled over and getting a ticket from having a back tail light out. Because it's an imp important part. Your lights are important. And that itty bitty part enabled the rest of the tail assembly to work properly. This light assembly, if you look at it, is full of itty bitty parts. It's got another bulb. That's for the backup light. I mean, it's throughout this. It's just itty bitty parts that make it work. Now, it leads me back to our scripture today. The city of Corinth. I really like Corinthians because I get to talk about the city of Corinth. And if you've ever looked on a map, an old biblical map, you will see the city of Corinth. And the way it's situated, it's, sit, it's situated on the Ithamus, which is a little bitty piece of land that connects one piece of land to the bigger pieces of land, okay? And at the bottom of that part was treacherous waters for boats to go through. But it was easier. Seriously, this is what happened in Corinth. They would actually unload the boat, take the boat across that little bitty piece of land, and then reload it up and go on their way. So it was a bustling place. Okay, think of the Panama Canal, but without all the, the water going up and down. I mean, they actually had to take the boat over that piece of land. It was bustling, had lots of different religions, and Paul had came to Corinth. Paul had to write a lot of letters, letters to Corinth, by the way, um, because he was battling a culture that was already there when he came and introduced them to Christ. So they were working through to be, how to be Christians in this culture. Sound familiar? We have to work through how to be Christians in our current culture, don't we? Well, People started to compare themselves to each other. That happens. We do it now, don't we? And make judgments on who was doing Christianity better, who was doing it worse, who was more important, who was less important because of the gifts they had been given. 
And today we're going to focus a little bit on that ladder, on what they said that they had less than someone else. Because I don't know about you, I, it's funny, I just had this conversation with someone else today. This has been a week of conversations. I find as Christians, we often suffer from imposter syndrome. We do our absolute best to follow Christ as Christ taught us, but then we don't believe we measure up. We see someone else and say, oh, they do it so much better. Oh, pastors deal with this too, please understand that. Churches deal with this. Entire communities deal with this, but we as people often deal with this. We'll compare ourselves to others and think we're just not quite enough. And then we worry someone's going to recognize that we aren't quite enough or not quite as good as we thought or we don't have the gifts that someone else has. And we're going to feel like an imposter. That's what the imposter syndrome is, by the way. Anyone else, anyone else ever suffer from that? I know I have. It's easy to start comparing yourself to others and just think I'm not quite enough or my gifts aren't as good. And that's why Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. In verse 14, he says, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. You see, he's trying to remind them that the members of the body of Christ are each important. All of them, whenever he uses you in here, a lot of times it's a plural, y'all. Think of you all. You all are important. Each of you serves a special purpose. Each of you has a gift that you are allowed to use that the Holy Spirit has given to you. Even if you don't feel very important. You know, it's similar to how someone who goes on a mission trip and their role is to cook the meals may not feel like they're very important. But then, if you have all these people who are out building during the day, they come in for lunch, and if there's no one there to cook the meal, and they have no food to eat, they're not going to be able to get much done, are they? That person who provides the meals and cooks them is an important part, even though they may think they're less than something, but actually nothing else can work without them. Just like nothing else can work in this light without that little bitty piece in this light assembly. We are so similar to this light assembly, it's funny, because all of us are little bitty parts. But together, we enable something bigger to happen. Just like that itty bitty part in here, holding in the bulb, I tried to, to replace it with tape, didn't I? I tried to give it, use something else to replace it. But then when a car would hit the bump, or if I would go over a railroad track, or if I would make turns or have a sudden stop, suddenly I'd realize the tape had just loosened up enough that the bulb could come out. It simply was not sufficient. And I underestimated the value of that itty bitty part in the grander scheme of things. Therefore, if any of you are struggling, thinking what you can do isn't making a difference, I ask you to reconsider, because I'm telling you, in the next few months, you're going to have more and more opportunities to serve Christ. And some of those, those spaces are going to look at it and go, gee, that's just an itty-bitty part. We were already talking to the mission team up in uh, Mission Columbus and trying to understand how many people we're going to have go to Kentucky. When can they go to Kentucky? What roles can they play? And that's something that even said in the last email we got. And don't think... You can't serve because we need people to cook meals. We'll need people to minister to people. In some cases, we're going to need people to be do case management. It's not all swinging a hammer. There's so much more to it, and all of them are important parts. We're going to be moving forward of some of our work with children, and I'll be telling you more about that. That's why it's important you get the newsletter because I'll be sharing most of it in there. We're going to be doing some more there, and everybody's going to have a part. Nobody is an itty-bitty part. All the parts are important. So if you have a gift that the Holy Spirit has given you, I want you to stop comparing yourself to others and use your gift. If you have been the gift of teaching, I need you to teach. If you have the gift of encouragement, encourage others. 
If you have the gift of leadership, I need you to tell me you want to lead. If you have the gift of sensing those who need prayer, I need prayer warriors. If you have the gift of organizing, I need folks that can organize in this church. If you have the gift of cooking, cook. If you have the gift of sewing, sew. And if you have the gift of singing, sing. For without you, other Christians may just be rattling around and not able to serve their purpose without you, similar to my light rattling around in this tellite assembly. We are all members of the body of Christ, and without each of you, we can't do what we are intended to do. Now, before we go to prayer, kids, did you notice something? The purple's pretty much gone, isn't it? All because all the planning and everything that went into our water here got neutralized because we were pointing out all the places where God is in our lives. And we need to point out God to other people. Because I tell you, there's a lot of kids out there that don't even know who Jesus Christ is. This is important. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of prophets, God of the apostles, you call us to restore that which is broken and to proclaim your vision of a world made new. Lord, create in us new hearts and strong voices as we pray today. We pray for those who have been anointed or cho chosen as leaders of people, that they may attend to the voices of their people and be guided by you. We pray for pastors and teachers of the church that they may faithfully interpret your world, your word for others. We pray for those who are poor and in need of assistance and for ourselves that we may open our hearts to their cries for help. We pray for those who are captives of war, victims of violence, and don't know any other way to live. May we bring them good news, both in word and in deed. And we pray for those with physical challenges and spiritual struggles. Make us ancients of healing and hope. Allow them to see God through us. And we pray for those who are oppressed by powers beyond their control. Give us courage to work, to set them free. God of the Jubilee, Make us the body of the risen Christ, united in all our diversity, and animate us by your Holy Spirit that together we may work toward your coming kingdom. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you at this time, as we do at the end of every service, to open your arms wide for your blessing. As we go from this place on this day holy to God, we rejoice in the strength of God. We fix our eyes on the grace of Christ, and we drink deeply of the Spirit who makes us one. May you drink slowly and deeply of what you have been given by the Spirit. And go out and share your gifts without comparing your gift to another, for all are needed, all are important, and we need to show all where God is working in our lives. Amen. That concludes our service today. Thank you once again, and I applaud you for making God a priority today.